Hey guys, Mizzo Frizzo here, and welcome back to my true first person shooter tutorial series. This is part four. For those of you who missed it, part three was actually called How to Create Your Own First Person Animations in Unreal Engine 5. I didn't call it part three because I wanted it to be somewhat of a standalone video for anyone who's not following the series, but once again, uh, part three was called how to create your own first person animations in Unreal Engine 5. And on that note, the next part, part five, will also not be called part five. It will be called something along the lines of how to create a weapon system in Unreal Engine 5. Um, again, it's going to be a standalone video for anyone who's not following the series. So once again, Part 5, which is coming up next, will be called something along the lines of how to create a weapon system in Unreal Engine 5. So today's tutorial is going to be just a quick one. Um, just a real quick one, we're going to set up a few little things such as uh, our character's look sensitivity. We're also going to be adding head turning. So if I look down and to the left here and eject, you'll see my character's looking down and to the left. And if I look up and to the right, You'll see my character's looking up and to the right. And we're also going to add jumping, falling, and landing animations. So without further ado, let me show you how to do this. Okay guys, the first thing I'm gonna get you to do is to change the look sensitivity of your player controller. So if I hit play here and I look around, I find this level of sensitivity absolutely absurd, especially during testing. Uh, so let's go ahead and set it up so we can alter that right now. Open up your character's blueprint and find event begin play. We're going to make some extra room at the end here and get player controller. Off of get player controller you can find set deprecated input your scale. Plug this in here and we're going to create a new variable and let's call it horizontal sensitivity sensitivity change this to a float and we can duplicate that one change this other one to vertical sensitivity hit compile and let's change the default values of this to 0 0.6 and 0 0.6. This is gonna be a little on the low side for some of you uh, sensitivity wise, but this is a good value for me, especially during testing. I might crank this up if I was actually playing the game, but um, just while we're in development, I, I like it. Um, we're gonna grab this horizontal sensitivity and plug that right into the yaw here because yaw is our left and right. Now we can't set up the vertical sensitivity in this way because we're not actually moving, the, we're not actually rotating the camera up and down. We are rotating our character's spine bones to look up and down. So we are going to have to set up the vertical sensitivity as part of this here. So I'm gonna start by moving this stuff out and making some more space. And I'm gonna grab the vertical sensitivity and the first thing I'm gonna do is divide it by 2.5. The reason I'm doing this is because what these add controller your input and add controller pitch input nodes actually do is take this action value and multiply it by 2.5 and I think negative 2.5. Um, I had to do some digging to find that out to actually um, figure out how to set up the maths for this. Um, so basically you don't need this but this just makes this uh, variable comparable to this variable. Um, if you didn't have this you'd obviously have to set vertical sensitivity uh, totally different to a totally different value. In fact a value 2.5 times different. So we divide it by 2.5 and we uh, multiply the action value by that and then we add that to the pitch. That's that all set up. So if we hit compile and save and play, 
our sensitivity is much more sensible. I like that very much, so much nicer. Um, okay, the next thing I want to do with you guys is set it up so the head of our character rotates when we look around. Now, I don't actually want um, the camera to turn with his head because uh, that'll make it difficult to keep the hands up in front of him and obviously we're making a first person shooter so his hands are going to stay up in front of him. Um, you guys don't have to do it this way and you certainly don't have to set it up this way if you don't want to but um, I'm going to take the camera and I'm going to reparent it to a different socket so that our head can turn and the camera won't uh, necessarily turn with it. So select the camera and change the parent socket to spine 5 um, and I think the values that I found that were good for these is 20, was it 26 and 17 and this third rotation argument to 105. These are called arguments by the way. I think this was 24. Yes, 24, 17 and this third rotation argument to 105 gets the camera position pretty much exactly where it was before. You can see it's a teensy little bit lower, but we haven't even set up our first person animations yet, so this is fine. This might want to be 25. 25, 17 gets it pretty much exactly where it was. Now, because this is parented to uh, the Spine 5 socket, this is going to behave exactly as it was before, but now if we rotate the head, it's um it's it's not going to change the behavior of the camera so the hands are still up in front of it um okay let's set it up to rotate the head so go back to the event graph and we're going to create a new variable and call it your i'm just going to move this up so it's with pitch here so i group them together so i know where it is we're going to set it right here and what we're going to set it as just going to add a reroute, re reroute node here to drag off of. What we're going to set it as is your uh, plus. Actually, what I'm going to do is come off this reroute node and multiply this to 0 0.25 just to tone it down a little bit. And I'm going to clamp these between the values of, say, negative 15 and oops 15 plug it in there and that's all we really need to do here head on over to the animation blueprint and straight over to the event graph drag off of character reference here and get your promote this to a variable we plug into the final execution pin there that's good now we have access to your we go to the anim graph and select everything here move it out so we have more space and i'm going to grab the first three transform modify bones and the make rotator and i'm going to duplicate this over here plug these in grab the your and plug it into your and change the bone to modify on these nodes to neck one, neck two, and head. And that should be it. We hit play now. You can see by the shadow there, my character's head is turning. And uh, with those values, it's um, not turning too quickly. Uh, you might want to fiddle with the values a little bit. Um, but if I eject here while I'm looking down, my character's bending over and looking to the left. And if I look up and to the right and eject, he's looking up and to the right. I think it looks pretty good. If you did want to change how quickly his head turns, you would just change this multiplier here. And if you wanted to change how far it can turn, you could play with these clamp values here. But yeah, that's, uh, that's it for that.
Uh, let us add jumping animations, jumping, falling, and landing animations. The first thing I want you to do with regards to this is come over to the event graph in your animation blueprint and this vector length that we are setting the speed off, I want to get rid of that and instead off get velocity here, get a vector length x, y. So instead of including the z axes in this get velocity, I'm only including x and y so that when we jump, he doesn't think he needs to run, if that makes any sense. We're going to change the name of this speed to ground speed. Whoops, ground, oh my god. Ground speed. So off of get velocity, vector length x, y, set the variable ground speed. Over in the enum graph, what we're going to do is I'm going to alt click, get rid of this connection, and I'm going to change the state machine to locomotion, and I'm going to new save cached pose and call this one locomotion, locomotion. And I am going to create a new state machine here and call this one lower body anims. And so locomotion now is just going to be this idle walk run for now. Um, and we're caching that into a cache pose called locomotion. And in lower body atoms, we can go in here, we can add a new state called locomotion. And in locomotion, we can grab our cached pose locomotion. So if this is a little bit confusing for you, basically just what we've done is we've cached our idle walk run into this one locomotion. This is going to be useful um, because when we um, when we set up our landing animation, it's actually an additive animation. So this is the pose that it's going to be adding to. Um, so in lower body atoms, we've created this state called locomotion and locomotion is just that cached pose of locomotion. So this is our idle walk run. Um, so back here in lower body atoms, what I'm going to do is click out here in some open space, right click and create a new state alias and I'm going to call this to jump slash falling. I'll explain to you in a moment what a state alias is. Um, but for now, we're going to drag off of that, make a new state called jump. And off of jump, add a new state called falling. And I'm also going to connect to jump falling to falling here. I'm also going to create another state alias called to land and off of to land a state called land and then land is going to connect into locomotion. So what these state aliases are are basically just a cleaner way of doing coding. So instead of connecting locomotion to jump and locomotion to falling and land to jump and land to falling all I have to do is select this state alias and check locomotion and land. And these are the states that these transitions can be taken from. So if these transitional rules are satisfied, uh, my animation blueprint can, can transition into them from locomotion or from land. Um, so, and, to, and if I select to land, I'm just going to select jump and falling so that if my character is jumping or falling, it can then transition into land if it lands. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is just add the animations to these states. So go into jump and find mm jump, plug that in there. 
And if we back out and go into falling, we can find mm fall loop and plug that in there. And as it says in the name, this is a loop because of our characters falling, falling, falling. We want this animation to keep looping. So select it and check loop animation over here and back out and in land what we're going to do is find our locomotion cached pose off of that we are going to apply additive and the additive animation we're going to apply is mm land whoop i've grabbed to the mm land can leave the alpha as one plug that in there and that is good okay so we'll back out and we'll do these transition rules now um, the first thing we'll do is select this uh, transition rule here to jump falling to jump and make sure the priority order is set to one and if we select to jump falling to falling and make sure that that priority order is set to two so it's going to prioritize going to jump rather than falling most of the time if we're in the air we probably jumped so it will uh, preference this so this one priority order one and we can go in there and what we can do is grab is falling and an and boolean and our velocity right click on this and go split struct pin velocity z is our vertical velocity and we are just going to check if it is greater than 100 so if our character is falling and a velocity is greater 100 greater than 100 we can transition into the jump state okay so to jump falling to falling again make sure that's priority order 2 we can double click that to enter that and just check if our character is falling back out once more and this transition if we just single click to select it we can make this an automatic transition by checking automatic rule based on blah 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 fancy way of saying this animation is completed and therefore we can transition to falling so as soon as the jump animation is completed it can transition uh, okay the transition to land to land we can double click this one get is falling and a not boolean if our character is not falling it can transition into land and once the land animation is complete we can automatically transition into locomotion so check automatic rule based on blah 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 and that's it guys if we hit compile and save we have set up our sensitivity our look sensitivity we have added head turning and we have added jumping and landing animations as i said guys really short one today just a quick one to say um to say hey and make sure that you guys know that i'm still here and still at work and on that note um the reason why I've made this one a quick one today is because I am working on the next one already, which is a weapon system shoot, and it's a big one, guys. It's not hard to follow, but um, it was hard to put together, and it's really, really going to be a big one. It's a fully blown weapon system that makes the most of inheritance and uh, class references so that you can reference whatever weapon you're holding uh, you can pick up um, the weapon pickups are actually objects in the world with simulated physics that you can walk up to and grab and uh, yeah it's it's really really fucking cool I'm really excited to share it with you guys but it is a lot of work um, it is coming in the meantime please hit like and subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you on the next one